So how would you do this? Step one, you're going to plot this Neumann standard curve. If you can do it on a transparency, it would be even great, but you can also use a light table. So you get something like that. Um, here is my basic standard Neumann curve. This one is electronically prepared. Uh, looks exactly like that. Okay. Now you need to use exactly the same size graph paper and plot your pumping test data. Something like that. So I have prepared a, the graph paper supposed to be the same, some kind of a well, observation well one, OW, and this is all the data I get. And you can see there is that curve part and then it's somewhat flat and then there's another curve part. So must make sure that these two fit the same graph paper. All right, now, now comes a matching game. And the matching game using the Neumann method is a little bit tricky because you need to match one ties curve on one end and then slide it over to the second ties curve and well, we'll show you. Okay, this is the data. And you match the early drawdown, this part of the curve first. So you're going to slide over your, your Neumann curve that you have created. And you can see that these dots here fit that fairly well up to about this point right there. So this is a good match. And now comes the tricky part. Are you done? Do you put your pinprick down? Not yet. Because now what you need to do is after you match the, fairly, the, the early drawdown first, you need to see if the late drawdown matches as well. well. How do you do this? Well, I do not know how long this line will go on. This is the problem. There is a standard graph. It shows the flat line goes from here to there, and then it starts to deviate. But in real life on my pumping data, this could be this long or it could be way shorter. I do not know. So this is just a standard graph that Neumann came up with. Therefore, you need to slide those things back and forth. Let me explain how this is done, right? What you need to do next is to slide that, once you get this match here, once you get this match, to slide the paper to the left without moving it vertically. You need to keep it a precisely horizontal. You cannot tilt it. You cannot move it vertically. So you slide it carefully over in this direction. Completely horizontal, not vertical, until you get that line into focus and see if it matches as well. Do not move vertically. That's very important. So keep those things parallel. So I moved it over there and it looks like I have at least for this portion here somewhat of a match. What if I don't get a good match? Then I move it a little bit vertically and move it back and forth. And basically I'm doing this back and forth until I get a good match for both graphs the early drawdown and the late drawdown. And it means I need to make some compromises sometimes. No, I cannot move it vertical while I'm sliding it back and forth. So we're moving it back and forth and trying to match both graphs as good as we can, which is sometimes really, really difficult to do, right? If the match is off, adjust vertically a little bit, then move back horizontal and see if the first match is still good. If this is off now, you need to adjust it again and move it back. You're just basically sliding back and forth, back and forth, and find a position where you, once when you slide it, both the end and the beginning are matching okay. You can slide it then only horizontally. Right? So move back and forth.
early and late drawdown have the best match by only moving horizontally without any more vertical adjustments. Kind of back and forth. Are you done yet? No, this is just the beginning. Um, we now have there's those two graph papers in position. Make sure they don't move anymore, at least not vertically. They still need to be able to move horizontally. All right. Now we need to extract the data and calculate a little bit. So here is what we're doing is once we have the match figured out, we're going to slide it back to the early drawdown first. I'm going to slide it back to the early drawdown first. No longer move it vertical, only horizontal. Okay. So we park this one right there. And we note where it takes off right there, where it takes off and goes into the, the beta area. So for my graph, it's around that part is where it takes off. So somewhere between this line and the one above it. So this is where it moves into the beta system. Now well, let's zoom in a little bit more so you can see it. That's my takeoff point right there. That which deviates from the ties curve. This is my 0 0.1 beta, and this is my 0 0.01 beta, and now I'm going to estimate where this one about sits, somewhere around here. Okay, 0 0.05-ish, something like that. Right between those two, well, it's a little bit closer to that. <coughs> But here's my 0 0.1 line, and there's my 0 0.01 line. So we need to kind of split the split the, the difference between the two, see how it best would fit. It's a little bit over the 0 0.5 line, so I would say 0 0.06-ish, about there. I got now my beta figured out without going through convoluted calculations or knowing which one is the vertical permeability, which is the horizontal permeability. I just got this one figured out, reading it off the graph here, where it takes off. All right. Now, leave the graph sitting there. Now you can do your match point or the pinprick that's common to both graphs. So kind of put a little dot down after you get this one all written down. Put a little dot down that is common on both graphs. Again, I prefer to use a one and one or some kind of a one system. Um, you can do it wherever you like, as long as it's inherent for both graphs. Uh, you can put your pinprick down, and then again, you get multiple data points at once. All right? And now you can calculate the early drawdown transmissivity as possible using basically the Tice equations, right? Here it is, transmissivity is Q over 4 pi delta H. Well, we should get WUA, we should be able to WUA read this one off that brown graph right there, whatever it is. And you can also calculate the elastic storativity. We use the UA, right? Remember, we have to. This is the the inverse, so we have to switch that one back again. Here's my my inverse, as you can see. You need to switch it back to UA, and then you can get the elastic storativity from both of those. Don't don't take the graph apart yet. Just leave it taped, so we will use it again in a second. Okay. Now what you need to do is now you're gonna slide it back. Remember, only horizontally, not vertically, to the late drawdown and see what my match point would be there. So you can pick a match point or a pinprick point there as well. Any point will do. Um, sometimes it's easiest to match a point that is at least for one graph is one, but it doesn't matter. You will calculate it out anyway. And now you calculate the late drawdown transmissivity. 
which is basically the same equation, but in this case, you get the late drawdown transmissivity, and you also get the specific yield figured out once you get solved for, for that one. So this is the Neumann curve pumping an unconfined aquifer and is the number one go-to method for evaluating an unconfined aquifer as it's being pumped. Crazy. Okay. Now, you can do a data check, which is really good. So let's, let's see you're not quite sure. Have I done this correctly? Have I, have I figured both of those out, one on the, on the early drawdown, one on the late drawdown? I got my beta, and the question is, what's the, how can I check the data? My ratio of SY over SA should be greater than 10. If it's not, then I made a mistake somewhere in my whole analysis. And I can go back to the drawing board and try to figure this one out. But it is a quick, quick data check. 